that peace, stress free, let it be. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you're new here. My name's Ashley, and welcome to my very first video of 2022. I understand that it's the middle of January. Um, I was just so exhausted when I got back from like my road trip and then also just like doing vlogmas was like really really exhausting. So I really just needed the first two weeks of January to like recuperate and just like take a break. <laughs> but we are finally back. So for my first video I'm going to be showing you how I made my pants that I wore for New Year's. Now I did film the actual sewing part when I made the pants but I'm gonna like narrate it now I guess <laughs> uh, but as I said I was exhausted and also COVID was really really bad so I did not do anything for New Year's I was literally making the pants and getting completely ready just to go take some cool pictures which they did come out really cool but you know that's the story of my life pretty much <laughs> so last New Year's Eve for 2021 I did a 24 hour dressmaking challenge and that was the first like real dress that wasn't just like a straight down kind of situation that I had ever made and it was really exciting and I did it in 24 hours like barely but I did it and somebody recently commented on that video and was like you should do this again this year so I thought that I would challenge myself to make something that I had never made again and I was going to make myself pants as you know because you clicked on this video <laughs> also instead of doing a 24 hour challenge I was doing a three and a half hour challenge because I just waited the whole day to start it on New Year's Eve. I don't know why I do that to myself. <laughs> the time I was filming the other intro that I had made, it was 4.34, but then I like procrastinated for like 20 more minutes. So it was actually like 4.55-ish when I actually started. And I was giving myself until eight o'clock to finish these pants because then I had to get ready and take pictures and all that good stuff before the fireworks started because my dog is very, very afraid of fireworks. So I needed to be home for her. <laughs> also, if you've seen my other sewing videos, you know that I do not use patterns really ever <laughs> and the same goes for these pants so i had a pair of pants that i liked the way that they fit and the style of them and everything so i was kind of just copying those and i used those as my pattern i guess that's always my best advice for like if you don't have a pattern or you don't really like know how to use patterns or something just use something that you already have that like fits you how you like it you know so that's what i did for these pants and i got this fabric off of etsy it was so gorgeous i was obsessed with it the only problem is every single step i took it like dropped pounds of glitter like glitter was everywhere and my boyfriend hates glitter <laughs> uh so he was very upset that he had to clean it up like in the house like twice um and there is still glitter two weeks later there's still glitter lingering in the hallway of my apartment building because i was like walking around in the pants but I'm just gonna spoil the ending because you already saw it in the thumbnail anyways. They came out so, so cute. So I'm so excited to show you all how I made them and just like the process of making them. That's the same thing. I had also bought three yards of this fabric because as I said, I have never ever made pants before. And I don't know why making pants seems so intimidating and like so difficult. So I got three yards just in case I messed up and had to like start over. <laughs> but luckily I didn't have to do that because I barely had enough time as it was. So if you like this video and you find it helpful or entertaining, be sure to give me a thumbs up down below so that I know. Also leave a comment down below of how these first two weeks of 2022 are going for you. I wanna know how we're all doing in this new year, so leave a comment. And also if you wanna see more videos like this and from me, then feel free to subscribe down below. All right, without further ado, if you want to see me try and kind of struggle a little bit uh, to make my very first pair of pants in under three and a half hours. Keep watching this video. <laughs> so to start out, I laid out my fabric and I actually folded it in half so that I could have two pieces of one side and two pieces of the other side. And I didn't have to cut like four pieces and worry about them like being uneven or whatever. And I just made sure that I laid the pants that I was using as a pattern out nice and flat on top and then also made sure that the fabric underneath was nice and flat as well. Then I just went around and started pinning the shape of the pants, leaving about a half inch seam allowance, which I really didn't need to do, but I did it just in case because I, like I said, don't know how to sew pants. Honestly, I think the seam allowance made it just a little bit more confusing for me. I don't know. Then once I had the pants outlined with pins all the way around, I had to do the waistband, which was a little bit complicated because the way that the pants that I was using had the waistband was like an elastic waistband. So it was like the elastic, the pants, they were like here together and then it was down. 
and then it was folded one more time so I wasn't sure exactly how much fabric I needed for the waistband. The elastic that I was using was one inch wide which was a little bit thinner than the pants that I was using as reference but it was totally fine and I basically just left double the amount of the elastic in fabric up top if that makes sense. So I left two inches extra of fabric from where it said the pants ended. So then once I actually finally had everything pinned, I just cut like right along where my pins were around the entire thing. And then because I had kind of just like estimated the seam allowance, I just like took the side of the pants that I had just made and flipped it over so it would make like the opposite side of the pants and just use that as reference for the other side of the pants. <laughs> and then to save time, I just didn't even bother like pinning it or anything like that. I just cut right along the other side of the pants. I don't know why this is feeling so hard to explain. It's like not complicated what I'm saying. I just I don't know what is going on today. <laughs> Once I had both the right and the left sides of the front and the back of the pants cut out, uh, I turned each like right and left side where the right sides were facing together, basically. Not basically, that's what I did. And then I just pinned along that seam allowance again because I was going to sew along that. I also just wanted to get it like as accurate as possible, so I used the reference pants again just to make sure I was pinning it in the right place, like seam allowance wise. So then once I had both the front and back pieces of the right and left sides pinned, but like separately, uh, I went over and prepared my sewing machine. This was a little bit of a thinner fabric, so I did turn my tension down to I think like three and a half. It was like a little bit thicker, but like mostly thin, I guess. And then I also set it to use a straight stitch, which I was later going to reinforce with a zigzag stitch, uh, but for now I was just doing a straight stitch and I was having my stitch length at 2.5. And then I actually only pinned along the like long outside seam of the pants and then the inside seam up until like where that like crotch like it goes like this the crotch thing and then there's like a stop right here and then it goes straight down I only pinned up until like where it goes straight down and not the curved part that curved part is going to be the crotch seam so it's going to be sewn like to the other like right and left side um, and not like front and back like these pieces are. I really hope that this is making sense. I don't know why it's so complicated to say. I emphasized it to myself while I was doing it so many times and then I sewed along the curved part anyway. <laughs> and then I had to seam rip it so I had just like wasted time doing that and just made my life so much harder. So do not sew on the curved part in this first step. <laughs> I cannot emphasize it enough. It will make your life so hard. Just don't make the mistake, please. So then, as I said, I wanted to reinforce that straight stitch with a zigzag stitch on top. So I went ahead and set my machine to the zigzag stitch. And then I put my stitch length at a 4.0 and then my stitch width at a 3.0. Then once I had that all set, I just did my zigzag stitch over top of my straight stitch. And I did it so that like when it zigs this way, it goes inside and like here's my straight stitch right when it zigs it goes on the inside and then when it zags it like barely touches the outside of the line because later on i'm going to cut off my seam allowance and i don't want to accidentally cut part of that zigzag stitch it would defeat the purpose of even like doing it so yeah just for reference that was how i reinforced the straight stitch with the zigzag stitch <laughs> and then i did the exact same thing to the other side of the pants but i was getting very frustrated because my zigzag stitch for some reason whenever i was doing it my thread kept breaking and it was so irritating it's been happening a lot lately, but this time, because I was in a time crunch, it was very, very irritating. <laughs> Ugh, my thread keeps breaking. But it's fine, we survived, we made it through. It was just a lot of like re-threading my needle and everything. And just a lot of frustration every time it broke. So obviously both of the pant legs are already turned inside out. And then all I had to do to put them together was line up that like round part together so this is hard to explain <laughs> but like it makes sense when you're doing it i just like it's so difficult to explain for some reason so i basically had both pant legs and i separated the front from the back but obviously there's still like some like i didn't separate it separate it i just like took them away from each other and then i started lining up that like curved crotch seam all the way around so when you like open it that way it makes it into like a half circle instead of just a slopey curve so yeah i just lined up that like half circle all the way around so it went from the back of the pants all the way to the front of the pants or the front to the back however you want to think about it and as i was pinning it i think i left about a quarter inch seam allowance because i didn't want it to go like up my like crotch <laughs> give me like a camel toe or something i feel like i probably didn't do a great job showing it on camera either because when you have the pants 
pants. It's just like so much fabric, but I hope I explained it to where it's like understandable. And then apparently I forgot to show me sewing it, but I pretty much just went and did a straight stitch and I was gonna reinforce it with a zigzag stitch after I made sure it fit. Because if I had a seam rip it, seam ripping a zigzag stitch with a straight stitch underneath, it'd just be like way too hard. So yeah, I just did a straight stitch all in the crotch area with the same like stitch length that I had used before. And then once I finished that, I actually went back and turned the pants right side out so that I could make sure that they actually looked like pants and like I didn't mess something up and they did I was so excited about it so then once I was done with that I decided to go through and cut off the excess fabric on the outside seams and then also on the inseam not the crotch area yet just those two seams <laughs> just because it was like extra fabric and it was making it kind of like bulky I guess it was just like I thought it would be easier to work with if I cut it off it didn't really make a difference but that's what I did in this step. And then, I don't know why I kept forgetting to show things, but I reinforced the straight stitch with a zigzag stitch, and then once I had that reinforced, I just cut off the excess fabric on the crotch area as well. And at this point, the pants were pretty much done. All that was left to do was to put on the elastic on the waistband, and then also I wanted to lettuce hem the bottom of the pants, which is really interesting because I've never lettuce hemmed either. So in this video, we made pants for the first time. We applied an elastic waistband for the first time. I don't think I mentioned that. I've never done anything with elastic before. And we lettuce hemmed the bottom of the pants. We are just trying so many new things on one project. <laughs> so I wanted to do the waistband first. I pretty much just measured the elastic around my waist. I didn't want it like super, super stretched out where it was like gonna like push my stomach up and you know make it like fall over the sides but then I did also want it a little bit tight on my waist so I just measured it around my waist and stretched it just a little bit and then once I had it where I wanted it I just cut it and then I pinned the two pieces together so that I would know where I wanted to sew it because I did have the pieces overlapping just a little bit uh, but then I changed my mind on how I wanted to sew it and I actually just sewed it with the two pieces together for some reason I'm not quite sure what difference that made uh, but that's how, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> but I did the same thing because it is elastic, I wanted it to be stretchy, but I also wanted the straight stitch just to like hold it together and everything. So I did a straight stitch and then reinforced it with a zigzag stitch. Then the most difficult part of these pants for me was putting the elastic around the waistband because the waistband was like bigger than the elastic, obviously, because I had stretched it, but I didn't really stretch it that much. So I don't know why it was so much bigger. I don't really know. But I basically had the pants. So here's like, say the top, the very, very top of the pants. And here's the elastic, right? I had this part of the elastic with this part of the pants. I put it together like that. <laughs> so that the rest of the elastic was inside of the pants, if that makes sense. And then I pinned it where I wanted to start it in the back. And I wanted to make sure that that like little line was in the back, just in case. I mean, you couldn't see it, but like just in case you could. And then I just pinned it all the way around the pants while stretching the elastic a little bit. But then I don't know what I did wrong because then when I got to the end, I had to stretch the elastic a lot and it did end up making the pants look a little bit weird. That's like the one thing that I really messed up on. But I think for my first time putting elastic on pants, it turned out pretty well. <laughs> I don't know how I would have done it differently so that that didn't end up happening but it's fine. I just had like so much more fabric than I thought I did for some reason. And then once I had that all pinned and ready to go, I just did a straight stitch pretty close to the edge of like where the elastic and the fabric met together, but like not right along the edge, just like kind of close. And as I was sewing the straight stitch, I made sure to tug the elastic a little bit to like keep it stretched out, but I had to make sure that I was not stretching out the pants because it was a stretchy fabric, but also I just like, I didn't need the pants stretched out. I only needed the elastic to stretch out enough to like fit the pants. So then all I did to hold the elastic down was what they did on my other pants as well so that they didn't have a seam like all the way around that you could see from the outside of the pants. So what I did was like, here's my fabric, here's my elastic, right? I folded it under one more time so that the elastic was completely hidden behind the fabric. And then I just sewed a little line on like the back seam, on the side seam, the front seam, and then the other side seam. Just a little line to help hold the elastic down. And to do that, I pretty much just did a straight stitch like forward and then backward and then forward and then backward. Just like, like an inch. Probably not even an inch, like half an inch. <laughs> On the other pants, they actually sewed it to like the actual seam, but I just did it to like the outside of the pants because you couldn't see it anyway. Uh, but I also didn't want to do a whole like seam all the way around. I guess. So then the only thing left to do of this challenge was to do the lettuce hem on the bottom edge of the pants. From other videos that I saw, doing a lettuce hem is pretty easy and it was 
pretty easy, honestly. <laughs> so all you have to do to sew a lettuce hem is like take the edge of your fabric, like the very, very edge, and then sew a zigzag stitch. I did mine pretty wide so that I could ensure it would go off of the fabric. So you put your fabric in and you have this zigzag stitch where it goes like stitch on one side and then off on the other side and then stitch on one side and off on the other side. And it just keeps doing that. And then as you're doing that, you stretch the fabric and depending on how like wavy you want the lettuce hem, you would stretch the fabric more or if you want it less wavy, then you just stretch the fabric a little bit. I wanted mine like in the middle, but like pretty wavy. So I was kind of stretching my fabric a lot, but I was only stretching it like right along where I was sewing. And yeah, I just did that all over like the flare bottom part of the pants. And yeah, that was honestly all it took to make the pants. I don't know why I was so intimidated by them, uh, but that was everything that I did to make my pants. Now I will let past New Year's 2022 <laughs> me take it from here to show you what they look like on and all of that good stuff. Okay, so I finished the pants. It's 8 14 right now. I can't believe I finished them in enough time. I am so proud of myself. I'm so excited. So I'm gonna go get ready like with the complete outfit and then I will show you the final product of these on. I'm so excited. I actually haven't even tried them on since finishing them so I hope they're fine but I, I think it's okay. I can't believe I made my first pair of pants. All right, I'm gonna go get ready. <laughs> I look so cute for somebody with nowhere to go. Okay, so here is the final product of the pants. I'm so obsessed. They're a little bit long uh, because I'm going to wear them with these shoes. And just in general, I wear them with like heels or platforms. So I left them long. <laughs> but they're so cute. I'm so obsessed. And here's the top that I made. It looks so cute with it. And then I just got ready for some pictures. But I'm absolutely obsessed. This is the first pair of pants I ever made, like I said. And I think they came out so freaking cute. I love them so much. For like my first pair, I think I did a pretty good job. I mean, I was really intimidated by like pants. Like I was afraid to make pants. But now I'm feeling so confident. I'm gonna make all the pants in the world. <laughs> also, I figured out how to put my eyelashes on in case anybody was wondering. One thing I will say about these pants is that there is so much glitter. My boyfriend spent like an extra 45 minutes after I was done just cleaning all of the glitter. And now I've been in my bathroom like making TikToks and doing this and whatever. And there's just glitter like everywhere. Even when I put them on to go take pictures, my boyfriend didn't want me to like walk through the house in them. So I literally changed into my pants in the hallway. So now my hallway is just covered in glitter. Like the hallway that like everybody shares. My boyfriend is like not the biggest fan of glitter, like at all. Uh, but I, on the other hand, love glitter. And as somebody who loves glitter, this is even a little bit much for me. Like every step, just like piles of glitter are falling off and I don't know why. <laughs> but once again, with that being said, these are the cutest pants ever. <laughs> I wish I could find a way to get the glitter to stay on, but that's okay. But yeah, so I just wanted to show you all the finished product. I'm so obsessed with them. They look so freaking cute. If these weren't shedding glitter, I would wear these like all the time. Maybe there's a solution. I don't know. I'm gonna have to do some Googling. Uh, my plans are going to include showering right now, so I don't infect my house with glitter. Finally eating dinner. It's a little bit late now, but finally eating dinner. And then watching the ball drop and consoling my dog who is severely afraid of fireworks. And that is also one of the reasons that I am not doing anything, but also mainly because of COVID. But the reason I was contemplating not doing anything is because my dog is really afraid of fireworks. So I will be cuddling her for the rest of the night, pretty much. I don't know why people set off fireworks in downtown with all the buildings and what, it's just so loud and like unnecessary. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of fireworks. I've been really sensitive to loud noises lately too, so my dog and I are going to be each other's emotional support animals. But anyways, I hope that you all had a very happy and a very, very safe new year and holiday season. And happy 2022. Fingers crossed it is the best year for everybody. I am manifesting it for you all, as well as for myself, of course, but for you all too. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and from me. And I can't wait to see you all next week in my next video. Bye.